Hello and welcome to another Champions Church online service. Whether you've been joining us for a while now or this is your first time with us, we just want to give you a huge welcome. Yes. I'm Emma and this is Caleb. Absolutely. Hey, it is a great honour and privilege to have you a part of our Sunday today. We're so glad that you have joined us. Now, every Sunday is, of course, a special Sunday. Yes. But this Sunday in particular is an extra, extra special, special Sunday because it is our very own Pastor Mark's birthday. Woo. Happy birthday, Happy Pastor birthday. Mark. Come on, the party <laughs> poppers are out. It's the time to celebrate. Happy birthday, Pastor Mark. Happy birthday, Dad. I yes. uh, hope you're having a great day so far, enjoying watching church online. We're so grateful for you. We love you and we believe this is going to be a great, great year ahead from all of us at Champions Church. Absolutely. Now, this Wednesday, we had our life groups again. Another fantastic Wednesday night. It was indeed. And with ever updating government guidelines, we're really excited about the prospect of now being able to start gathering in small groups of people. Yes. Of course, socially distanced uh, but together nonetheless. And we're really excited about that. And uh, life groups are awesome. And uh, we really love getting to be together, whether online or in person. Absolutely. They're such a fundamental part of Champions Church. It really is an opportunity to build closer connection with people, take your knowledge and understanding of the Bible to a deeper level, to be vulnerable, to share prayer requests and needs with each other. So it really is a valuable part of our lives and our spiritual growth. It is. And maybe you're, you're watching today and you're uh, contemplating being a part of a group. Uh, maybe you're a little bit nervous, a little bit hesitant, not really sure what's involved. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, hey, if I sign up for a life group, am I going to get placed in a group of strangers mm. who I don't really know? We want to put your minds at rest. And we want to let you know that when you sign up to join a life group, we really uh, base your registration on two things. Firstly, pre-existing relationships. We want to know if you have any pre-existing relationships already in our church. Uh, because we want to make you feel as comfortable as possible when you move into a group. And if we can place you somewhere where you know people already, then that is a great plus for us. Now, of course, the life groups are the perfect opportunity to meet people for the first time, develop new friendships. But if there are existing relationships, then we want to place you based on those. And second of all, we want to place you based on location. Mm. Obviously, right now we're meeting online beginning to meet back up in person as the weeks go on and as guidelines are updated. Uh, but when we do start meeting again in homes, we want to place you based on location uh, so that uh, the home is as accessible to you as possible. And so be, it, be assured uh, that we very much have your best interests in mind when placing you in a life group. But hey, don't just hear it from us. Uh, we would love to introduce you to a fantastic couple in our church, Nicoma and Simone, who are a part of a life group and actually are beginning to lead their own yes. life group. So why don't we hear from them about their life group experience? My experience of the life groups is that they are really good. Um, I really enjoy the fact that you can fellowship with people um, on the, in a small group in, in someone's house and just um, get to know people on a personal level. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, going to a big church, it can be difficult to speak to um, a lot of people or everybody on a Sunday, yeah. especially if you're so many different teams. Um, so the small groups, life groups, are a really great way to get to know um, people that maybe you wouldn't be able to on a Sunday. Yeah. Thanks so much for that, Nick and Simone. We've actually got a few more testimonies from some other people involved in our life groups sharing their experiences. We have Brandon, who is in one of our young adult life groups. Life group has impacted me in many positive ways. It has brought me closer to God because you're able to sit with fellow believers in an intimate environment and really dig into God's word. I love that we are able to listen to everyone's views on the scriptures and it broadens your mind even further. I love the fact I now have a second family almost, as I can hand over any prayer requests and discuss issues I may have going on in my life that I wouldn't even feel comfortable talking about to people I've known for years. Wow. 
I love how open and honest we all are, which makes us more connected spiritually and allows our emotions to run free. I love how uplifting and supportive everyone is, which just brightens your mood and makes you want to be a better person all round. So good. So Thank good. you, Brandon. And here's one from Tiffany, who's in one of our youth life groups. She says, when I first came to church last year, I didn't know anyone and would go in and out of the church on Sundays. But because of life groups, I was able to settle into the church, make friends, and feel as though I'm also a part of the Big Champions family. A family that has helped me grow so much in my faith as a young Christian. Amazing. Mm. And Jill, who just celebrated her 50th birthday. Happy birthday, Jill. Happy birthday, Jill. Sunday to Sunday is a long time to go without seeing my church family. Yes, that's what we are. I live in a home where I'm the only one saved and so it is really hard worshipping and praying and talking about God with people who do not believe. My life group has given me the chance to be in a family setting, to be with other believers like me. They encourage, support and share wisdom with me. There is always a time to be sociable where we can share food and laughter. We also share our heart and tears. I didn't need to pretend to be anything with my Champions Life group. They love and value me for how Jesus sees me. Wow. I can be honest and vulnerable with them and know that I'm not alone. Life is better together. Yes, life is better together. And we cannot encourage you strongly enough to get connected in this way. Maybe you're wondering, hey, what does a life group night look like? What is the format? What does it consist of? Well, you've heard pieces of information there from people who are already a part of a group. But just to emphasize, it is a place really for you and I to develop our relationships with both people and God. It's a safe place. It's a great environment where we can have fun, where we can be open and honest, where we can learn and grow. When we physically meet together, there is a lot of food involved, which of course is always a bonus. Yes. Uh, but why don't, in conclusion, you take a moment just to let people know how they can sign up yep. to be a part of a group. Absolutely. So if you hop onto our church website, championschurch.org.uk, you'll see a header life groups. If you click on that, you'll be able to sign up through there. Yes, and we would love to see you in a life group this Wednesday. Uh, along with hundreds of other people who are already involved. Well, it is that time on yes. a Sunday where we're about to enter into our service. So come on, wherever you are, whoever you're with, why don't you stand to your feet? Why don't you engage? Why don't you get involved? We're going to start with worship and then we're going to hear a great word from Pastor Mark on his birthday. And we've got a great service lined up. So come on, let's give God the praise he deserves. Good morning, welcome to Champions Church. Come on, let's sing together. This is no performance. Lord, I pray it's worship. Empty words I can afford. I'm not chasing feelings. That's not why I'm singing. Thank you. 
God, we give you all the praise today. Jesus, you are worthy. We are lift your name today.
Jesus, you alone. You are the Lord God Almighty, strong in compassion and mercy. Oh, Jesus, you
Hey, what a great song to lead into this message today. Jesus, you alone. And why don't we, just as if we were in church today and we have a number of people here today, why don't we clap our hands and celebrate in your lounges all that God is doing today. Come on, everybody. Wow, it feels like we are coming back. Yes, church is your lounge right now, your kitchen, your bedroom, wherever you are, that is church. And you know, really, church has never been about a building, of course, has it? No, it's always been about uh, the church is the people and where the people are, that's the church. But I don't know about you, but I do miss the sense of being together as a community, you know, as we come together in this wonderful building. And that's what I miss. I don't know about you, at this moment, after, you know, listening and being part of the service every Sunday morning for the last, what is it, 10 weeks, 11 weeks, something like that, in our 11th or 12th week. Never good on numbers, as you know. But I just, you know, I try my best in our lounge. Any of you, in, you know, when the worship's on, you try your best in the lounge. And, and Gillian, my wife, looks across at me as I'm, as I'm really trying to strain and grunt out the worship songs. And uh, she looks at me as if to say, now tone it down a bit, Mark. So I can't wait to be back. And, uh, but I'm going to let you into a secret. During this time, because I'm watching all the words appear on the screen for the worship songs, I've actually learned some of the words to the worship songs. So when I come back, I'm going to be, wow, let's get it. Hey, why don't we pray? Thank you, Jesus, for today. Thank you for every home, for every family right here today. And I pray your blessing upon every home, every parent, every single mom, every person in our community, a community of faith, and everyone watching today online via our app or on our website or whatever means, I pray a blessing on you. And whenever you're watching this, whether it's coming from you on this Sunday morning, to you on this Sunday morning or further into the week. We pray right now the blessing of God that Jesus would be glorified. You alone are worthy, Jesus. And come on one more time. Let's put our hands together wherever we are as we take our seats today. Be blessed as you take your seats. Well, on my birthday today, woohoo! Is anybody, is anybody, well, this looks like this is my party. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, we've got a massive crowd here today. We've got about eight people spread around. And uh, yeah, on my birthday today, I have to say, and nobody sang, come on. I, 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 <laughs> all right, no, no, no. Thanks very much. Um, I, I have to say, I feel like a proud father. Uh, and I want to express my heart to you today. I feel proud of you all in the way that you have conducted yourselves during this time. Faithful in standing strong, faithful in loving, faithful in encouraging, faithful in caring, faithful in meeting online through our life groups and leadership events, and then faithful in giving. Thank you so much. You know, when the church hasn't met for all these weeks, it really could have gone all wrong. But you know, from day one, I've really, Caleb, I've really, as you know, at home, we have been trusting God every week to meet our needs. And you know, it feels like we've gone back to the real basics of trusting Jesus again, which I absolutely love. Our needs are greater than ever. You know, if, if I mention just the needs of our Champions Kitchen Outreach teams, Big shout out for them. Come on, guys. Let's thank God for every one of them. Because they are right now having to, and, and, and privileged. I know they feel privileged and honored to be serving our community. And we thank you as the teams. But you know, the, the, that outreach is serving five times the amount of meals that they were 10 weeks ago. And it is such such an amazing blessing that they are being to the community. So I personally want to thank you. You know, with racial tensions running so high throughout the world right now, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage myself. I want to encourage us all to keep doing what we have always done, which is, guys, girls here today, 
You know, we've, from day one, we've, we've tried to treat people, all people, with respect, dignity. Political correctness right now, as always, is a minefield. There are lovers and there are haters, and they're all coming out right now. But I want us to go back to the simple truth that we started this church with. Do you remember it? Some of you do. And that simple truth is this, that love will win the day. It always has, and it always will. And I, with, with by the grace of God, and I'm asking you to do the same, especially during this time, to take the high road, to always take the higher road, not to be a person that just leaps in and then regrets what you've said. My role here is not to be a politician, thankfully. I don't even want to try and be politically correct. My role has been always, and my role here today, is to lead people into what's biblically correct. Today, once again, is my opportunity to do that as the storms of racism rage outside. This is our opportunity to find our feet, to find our voice, and to remind ourselves about what really matters. You know, on this week, this very week, 1st of June, I believe it was, 2009, Air France Flight 447 was scheduled for an international flight. I believe it's from Rio de Janeiro. Come on, you should all know these facts. Uh, in Brazil, and it was flying a 10 and a half hour journey to Paris. That flight hit uh, turbulence, ice, during the flight, and after three and a half hours of the flight, that plane went down in the ocean. 228 people, passengers and crew, lost their lives. The investigation took years. They eventually found the jet in the water, broke and smashed to smithereens. And the investigation fo that followed showed that the crew were under immense pressure. They found themselves in a turbulent crisis. And they didn't do in the crisis what they had been trained to do. And they didn't rely on their instruments. Friends, that uh, tragic event back all those years ago is a reminder for us as the people of God, the family here at Champions and wider afield, whoever is tuned in today, listen carefully. In a crisis, do what you know to do and do it right. And then check your instruments. The instrument that I'm referring to right now is the instrument of God's Word, the Bible. I have to check myself before I Ready? Wreck myself. I have to what? Check myself before I wreck myself. The story is told of a college graduate that was completely broke. Some of you know the feeling. He was homeless. He was disheveled, completely destitute. No one would give him a second look. But he'd recently come to faith in Jesus and was wandering the streets, trying one Sunday morning to find a church. And he stumbled on a very conservative church, middle class. And because he was late, the place was packed, he couldn't find a seat. So he walked in, everybody saw him. This guy looked completely wrong. He didn't look like the kind of material that they ever had in their church. But the only thing he knew to do was to walk down the aisle slowly. He looked around. He couldn't find a seat. So he walked right to the front and sat right underneath the pulpit in this conservative church. As this was happening, the place went in complete silence. Hush. 
came over everybody thinking, this should not happen. He doesn't belong there. The front of the church is reserved for the nice people. As this was happening, a really well-to-do old man that was well-known within that church, he was very austere. He gets out of his seat and slowly from the back of the church makes his way down, holding in his hand his walking stick like a cane. Everybody knew, from the youngest to the oldest, what was about to happen. They knew that this old fella was going to tell this young guy, you are not to sit here. They knew he would probably raise his cane, his stick, and say, oi, move on. The whole church, you could feel the tension growing as this played out before them almost like as if in slow motion. The old man took his cane as he approached the guy, lifted it up and placed it neatly right on the floor beside the homeless man. Then he took off his jacket. Everybody's thinking now what's going to happen. And he laid it neatly on the floor as best as he could. And this old gentleman that had been part of that middle class church for all those years, with one statement with his body language, showed the whole church what he actually believed. And he eased his old body down and sat cross-legged on the floor right beside him. Do you know that church was never the same again? It was stunned. Stunned by the actions of one man who made a decision even late in life to let go of his prejudice. The word prejudice, as you probably know, is made up of two words, and it means to prejudge, to prejudge. And in the case of right now, it is to prejudge, to look at somebody's skin color or somebody's place in life, somebody that's not like you, and to prejudge them, and therefore, based on what you see and what you think and what you feel, you treat them differently. Now remember what I said, check your instruments. And I've checked mine, James chapter 2, verse 1. It starts with these words, my brothers and sisters. My brothers and sisters. Do you know it's not my business to interfere in other people's business outside of this building? But what is my business is to take care of what's going on here. My brothers and sisters. It says this, believers in our glorious, wow, what words, glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. I looked up the word favoritism, and it literally comes from the word partiality, which means unfair bias towards one person over another. And I believe that what we are facing right now is an unfair bias, a prejudice, prejudging a person by the color of their skin rather than the color of their heart. James 2 goes on to say in verses 8 and 9, remember, check your instruments. If you really keep the royal law, that's what it says found in Scripture, it's called the royal law found in Scripture, it says this, love your neighbor as yourself. Do you know if you disrespect another human being, you are disrespecting yourself. If you disrespect another family by the color of their skin, you are disrespecting and bringing disrespect to your family. But if you show favoritism, it says, you sin, you sin and are convicted by the law as a lawbreaker. Friends today, think about this, that when you judge a person, that when you behave in a racist manner, that when you 
Believe that you are better than somebody else. Do you know what you're doing? You are not only sinning, but you are breaking the law of God. You see, my voice, I know, does not have the power to change the United States of America and what's happening there. We see it on our television screens. My voice doesn't have that power. I don't have, even have the power to change the United Kingdom where we live. But friends, today I want to remind you that I do have the power, and so do you, to address and change what goes on in my own backyard and my own community and my own church. That's my business. My business is not the other side of the world. My business is my backyard. And from there on, we together, as the ripples of change go out wider into our community, we can be the change in our circles of influence. Even the six or eight people here this morning gathered here in our church, even amongst us, we could be the change that needs to happen. You know, friends, let me speak to you from my heart, of course, as I always try to. I've been your pastor for 30 years now, 31 almost. For most of the time, in those three decades, I have spent countless hours speaking with people. Say with. With people. I've calculated somehow. Do you know that on at least 4,000 occasions, maybe nearer, nearer to 5,000 occasions, I've spoken to people. Say two. So I've spent out, countless hours with people, sometimes holding their hands in death, sometimes counseling them, sometimes encouraging them, always trying to lift their lives. That's been the theme I've tried to adopt in my life. And I've spent over 4,000 hours speaking to you. But today I'm going to do something different in that I'm going today to speak for you. As a white man, I am speaking on behalf of all the black families in our community. And all of those black families that are in our church, in order that you can all understand loud and clear where we stand on racial prejudice. Do you know I've never used this platform, never want to use this platform to try and be a politician, nor should I. Neither am I trying to score points with one side or another. I'm simply and humbly God's spokesman. I am today His ambassador for you. You say, what makes you think that? Are you some kind of big... No, 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 no. Remember, check your instruments. 2 Corinthians 5.20, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though, as though God were making His appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to each other and to God. You see, this morning I am speaking for you it's like as if God has put me here today with a microphone on a platform so that I can speak for you, not to you or with you today. You see, nobody has the choice as to whether when born they are going to be black or whether they're going to be white. You and I are who we are. But you know this, the only one thing therefore left for me to choose and for you to choose is how I treat people. That's the choice I have to make. How am I going to treat people? And I decided over three decades ago now, in wanting to build, along with my wife, a robust, multiracial church to treat all men, all women, all children, with respect, as an equal in the sight of God. Nelson Mandela said, 
No one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion. Nelson Mandela said this, people must learn to hate and if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. And friends, today on this Sunday morning, with regard to the storm out there of racial tension and discrimination, I want you to know that I don't have to think about it. I don't have to pray about it. I don't have to have a meeting about it because I don't see black people and call them black people. I call them by who they are, their name. I see people. I see people and they are all welcome. This is their home as much as it's anybody else's home. And if you don't like that it's their home, you don't belong to this home. If anybody in our black families and our black communities feel that they have no voice, and you feel listening to this message, Pastor Mark, I don't feel as if I have a voice. I will speak up for you. Now, some people right now may feel a bit nervous, a bit hot under the collar. Or oh, what's he going to say next? Let me ask you this question. Why would you be? Why would you be nervous? I don't have to polish a nice politically correct sermon do you know all I have to do? It's simple. I just have to speak from my heart. You see, black people matter is not a cheap statement that we put out there in a time of crisis to make a point. To me, it's a statement of life. This is my statement. It is my life. It is the statement of this church. And to everybody that calls champions their home, I am very proud of you, all in the way that you have risen to take care of people during this time. Just to mention just one family of Tembin Cozy, both during his illness and then COVID-19 that took his life prematurely, I believe. And you've done outstanding in looking after this precious black family in our church. You have demonstrated that Champions Church, the people of this place, the people of faith, I don't care what the name of the church is, wherever you are, whoever you belong to, but the question is, you have demonstrated what true selfless, selfless love is towards a black family in our church. With acts of kindness, it's what this church is and was and will be built on two words, love and respect. Some of you here will know this story, so I'll tell it again. In fact, part of it I've never told before, so you're about to hear it firsthand. You know, back in the early 90s, we were a small, very small, white, very white, middle class, very middle class, church. And something was wrong. And from the time I learned to drive, I used to pick up, I don't know how he came about, I don't know how we got to meet this family, but I used to pick up in my very first car every Sunday afternoon for Sunday school. Does anybody remember the days of Sunday school? Anybody old enough? And I would give a lift to two small black children from this beautiful black family just up the road here. Every Sunday afternoon, I park outside their house. Sometimes they'd be early, sometimes they'd be late, sometimes they'd be on time. They never ever said a word. They could speak English, but they never said they'd get in the back of us in the car. The one little guy, I met him recently, six foot seven. He was about, I don't know, two and a half feet at the time. He was just, you know, just a, a little young guy. And his sister, and they'd get in the back of the car, the mom would wave them off, I'd take them, I'd bring them home. I did that for months in, months out. And then in 1992, after all those years had passed, 
their mother, mom, came to a tent crusade that we held on the field just outside our church here. And there, many of you will know this lady who also went to be with Jesus a few years ago, Francis Blackstock. Francis Blackstock was their mom. She came to the tent crusade. She listened about Jesus herself for the first time and there and then walked straight to the front and gave her life unreservedly to Jesus and her life changed. She would go up to Dudley Market every week and tell people about Jesus. She'd get more people to come to church. And she used to say to us and to our shame, I am the only black person in our church. And I used to think, yeah, I know that. Don't keep reminding me. I knew something was wrong. So myself and my wife started privately to pray about it. And then little by little, other people started to notice that we were praying about it. And then after years, a trickle, one came and another came. And until today, friends, as you will know if you belong to this house, we are blessed and privileged and honored to have a congregation now that numbers more than 50% of the people that are black people in our church. We are so excited because we came from that and believe God would take us to a multi-ethnic church, a multicultural congregation. And we are Champions Church. Everybody gets treated the same. If you've ever needed a reminder about that, it's now. And today, I'm blessed and honored to say that we have some of whom are sitting here right now. Thanks for being here, guys. Blessed and honored to say we have white leaders. We have black leaders. I have black senior leaders who sit alongside me. I have white senior leaders who sit alongside me. We have countless black families. You know what? I say it with a smile. We have Black families that call myself and Jillian mom and dad. Now that certainly turns a few heads, especially if they do it when they see us outside shopping. <laughs> do you know I have black children in this church who run up to me with their arms wide open and they call me Papa? I know little Zachary does. Do you know what? We've never ever once looked at the color of somebody's skin and felt we are better than they. Do you know, friends, let me say this. I'd rather die than that be said. In fact, my daily prayer, if I was to open my prayer journal right now for you, which I could do, but your name's probably in it. <laughs> it would be a bit embarrassing, wouldn't it? I looked before I came here today and I noticed that point number 16, I've got about 40-something prayer things that I work through most days. And point number 16 is this prayer request. Lord, help me to consider other, better pe other people better than myself today. Every day when I pray through the prayer lists, point 16, Lord, Jesus, Help me to, what did I say? Consider other people better than myself today. That goes for everybody. Now listen, if you want to offend me on my birthday, simply say these words to me. Pastor Mark, prove that you treat people the same. Do you know what I'm going to say back to you? With all grace, I'm going to say this, I don't need to. My life has proved that. I will be both honored and privileged to be leading our dear friend Tim Binkose's funeral on Wednesday with just 10 people. That's all that's allowed at this one. And for those of you listening that don't know who I'm talking about, he was one of my right-hand men, in prayer, that is. 
I called him a prayer warrior. I call him a general in the faith. He stood like a general. He stood by my side. See me as if if you touch that man, I'm going to fight you off. <laughs> he treated me. Never that I asked for this and I never believed it, but he treated me. He said, you are my spiritual father. Do you know, I never ever saw Tim Binkozi as a black man. I never called him a black man. I simply called him friend. That's who he was. When an African man who actually is in this church, a few feet away from me right now, social distancing, sitting in a row, all on his own right there. When he and his wife lost their newborn child, I'll never forget it, Noble. Of course, you never will too. And that precious child was laid in a tiny white coffin. I'll never forget you walking down the aisle. Caleb, you were there. There were just a few of us, I remember, traveling over to Birmingham. And we stood there, and I remember that day, weeping, almost as if it was my own and you were my own. Black people matter. Every one I've mentioned so far is a black person in that church. And I want you to know that your utmost respect that we have for you, your family, now your child has grown up, and now another one on the way. Wow, won't that be great? I think it's going to be born on my wife's birthday. She is praying like mad that it will. <laughs> you know, it is possible that you may think, Mark, what are you bothering to say this for? Because racism doesn't affect my life. Listen, that may well be the case. And I understand that because racism has never been part of my life either. But there are hundreds of people inside and outside of our church right now that at times like these especially that are left with big questions, aching hearts with no answers, trying to find their true value. And friends, my heart reaches out to every single one of you. If this message isn't for you, then I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you right now to join me in making this message for those that need to help making this message for those that need to hear it today. The black lives, black people matter. At the end of the day, what I think is important for you to know but it's never that important about what I'm going to say right now because I, what I think and feel I be, and believe is very important because that gives this church champions its heartbeat. What myself and our leaders believe, that's the heartbeat of this church. But friends, the real heart from which the heartbeat comes, it is at a different level. And it is this one, and with this I close. The question is, what does God think about you? Every single day when you wake, I want you to get your value, not from a man, not from a woman, not from a group, not from a status, not from a hashtag, not from an Instagram post, but your true value comes not from even myself and what we believe. Of course, your true value comes from God who created you. Can you ever imagine a moment where God would separate people by their ethnicity and say to them, oh, because you are black over there. Oh, because you come from that race over there. Oh, because of you over there. Because of your financial status over there. Can you ever believe that God would separate black people and put them in another room 
Can you ever believe that he would do that and give special treatment to other people? The answer to that, friends, is ultimately found in looking forward through the telescope of the book of Revelation as we look into heaven. In Revelation chapter 7, it says these words, verses 9 and 10. And John, as he looks into the future and sees a glimpse of heaven, and he says this, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that nobody could count. So don't even try. Ready? From every nation, from every tribe, that means ethnic minority, from every ethnicity, from every people, every language. The word language is there for every tongue. Whatever your native tongue is, you're there standing, not in a side room, not on a special seating area out of the way where nobody can see you, not under a banner marked blacks there and whites there, not a special seating for those who are ultra privileged, but in heaven we're all standing together before the throne and before the Lamb. And they were wearing white robes, every single one of us, and were holding palm branches in their hands. And John says, I saw it. And they all cried out in a loud voice. Wow, I can't wait for this. I'm not, by the way, I'm not ready to go. I'm only 59 today. <laughs> but you know, every believer should look forward to this. I'm looking forward to seeing Tem being cozy again. Do you know what they said? Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. The Lamb is Jesus. You see, God wants you to be included right now. Where are you standing in relation to Jesus right now? You see, the Bible categorically wants you to know that heaven is a place for you. Every tribe, wherever you come from, whatever place you were born, wherever in Africa or any other part of the world, Jesus has a place for you. Whoever you are, whatever your native tongue, whatever your upbringing, no matter who you are, Jesus has built heaven for you and we will all stand before Him. The question today is, have you ever known, felt, experienced, and here's the big word, have you ever accepted Jesus into your heart? Right now, I know that many of you would love to do that because ultimately, what does God think of me? Well, we find that when we look through that telescope into heaven and we see, I'm there. There's a place for me. So it's been reserved. The question is, will you accept your place? Will you respond right now? Right where you are, in your lounge, watching this online somewhere. No matter where it is, no matter what time of the day, no matter what day it is, it doesn't have to be Sunday. Listen carefully. I'm going to pray a prayer. I'm going to ask you right now to pray this prayer simply from your heart and believe it right now. Lord Jesus, I accept you. Thank you that you love me. No matter who I am, no matter what part I come from, no matter what tribe I came out of, thank you. You've built a place for me. My value comes from you today. Thank you for giving your life for me. Thank you for paying the ultimate price for my life. Thank you today. I'm special. Thank you today. I'm loved. Thank you today. I'm accepted. Thank you for a church that accepts me and loves me and respects me. Thank you today for providing me a place 
when this is all over, to go back to a place of love and refuge. I accept you into my heart, Jesus, right now. Amen. Now, friends, if you prayed that prayer, stay, stay right to the end. We're going to stand right now and worship God. I want you to know this church is built on the love of Jesus and the love of Jesus that He has for every single one of us. And what I want you to do is to play your part today. Come on, let's do this right now. Stay with me. Play your part today and send out this message of love to somebody that needs to hear it. And uh, this message of acceptance, send it to somebody in your family, in your community, all over this area right now. Send it into another black community and say, hey, this is, this is what we believe. This is my church. This is what we stand for. We are with you. And I'm going to ask you, come on, in these next remaining days and weeks, during lockdown, let's continue to build strong lives together. Let's make a difference and let's be a difference. We can't change the world, but we can change our backyard and our family. Come on, let's thank Jesus for His Word, shall we? Here's, let's stand and here's a great worship song. Come on, I'm going to ask you to enter into it. Come on, let's just lift our hands and worship Jesus right now. God bless you. I've searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise and Treasures of fate Are never enough and You came along Put me back together is now satisfied hearing your love come on sing oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you there's nothing nothing is better together. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness. I fail you the flaws. Lord, you see more. You still call me friend. Cause you got out the mountain. Cause you got out the bed.
Hey, wasn't that a great service today? And a huge thank you to Pastor Mark uh, for bringing such a profound word in such a timely season. Mm -hmm. I know it's uh, impacted me. Uh, I'm sure it's impacted all of you at home. And uh, we really want to give you this opportunity to get in touch with us as a church. Of course, what is happening right now is affecting a lot of us. Uh, that goes without saying. But if you feel like you want to process this, if you feel like you want to talk to someone about that which is happening right now around the world, I want to point you in the direction of our online chat. And on there, it's going to ask you for your name and then it's going to give you uh, three options. The first option is prayer. If you have a prayer request right now, we would love to hear about it. We have a fantastic pastoral team who would love to pray for you during the week, whatever needs that you may have. Uh, the second option is to make a simple inquiry. Uh, that can be anything. Uh, again, it may be you wanting to talk to one of our team, one of our staff about some of the issues happening right now. Uh, maybe that are affecting you at a deep personal level. We want you to know that we as a church are here for you. And finally, if today you've made a decision to become a Christian, you've made a decision to follow Jesus Christ, then there is a button that says, I have decided. We want you to click on that button uh, to mark your decision today to follow Jesus. And we have a gift as a church that we would love to send you. Firstly, we have a Bible, a New Testament Bible that we would love to send your way. Uh, we believe the Word of God is transformative and uh, we want to get that into your hand if you don't already have one. Secondly, right now appearing on your screen, you can see a brochure. This brochure was designed by our pastors specifically for those who are making a decision like maybe you right now to follow Jesus. And it really talks you through that decision, answers some of the questions that you will have and really helps to make sense of what is happening right now in your heart and in your life. And so we would love to send that to you. So by clicking on the I have decided button, uh, you are letting us know you want that gift and we're gonna send that to you completely free of charge this week. But uh, we're so grateful for those of you today who have made that decision, so proud of you. It's the greatest decision you will ever make. Mm, for sure. And just in regards to giving at the moment, although we're not physically meeting together, there is still a lot going on. Champions Church is still very much mm. alive and active. So can I encourage us to just continue to be faithful yes. and generous in our giving? You can do that through your phone or you can do that through the church website. Absolutely. And hey, if there are any kids, which I'm sure there are tons watching right now, we want to say a big hello to you. If you didn't already know, every single Sunday at 12 noon, we have a program just for you. It's so cool. It's so exciting. And I know that you're going to want to uh, watch today at 12. Isn't that right? Yes, it's going to be good. Isn't that right, Laura? That's right, Emma. We've got worship, today's Bible story, champion puppets, today's challenge, and not to mention an extra special treat. So tune in at 12, you won't want to miss this. Thanks, Laura. And hey, before we go, just a reminder of many exciting things that we have coming up this week in the life of our church. Tomorrow night is the fourth and final part of our online interactive Bible school with Pastor Mark. It's not too late to register. You can do so by clicking the link in our Instagram bio and you can be a part of that tomorrow night at 9 p.m. And then don't forget this Wednesday night, Champion Life Groups. Yes. We hope that you'll be a part. We hope to see you there. And uh, we've got a great week in store. But until we see you again, have an awesome rest of the day and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for joining us in church.